Hello! So throughout the late 1800s and into the early 1900s, there was this brilliant trend of putting cobwebs on things. So for this project, I wanted to take inspiration from the Cobweb with Wild Roses pattern from Peterson's Ladies National Magazine, their March 1883 issue that I found on archive.org, and I thought it would be fun to make a Victorian-inspired spiderweb tablecloth. So I've got some plain black homespun cotton from the quilting section, and this version has a wider weft since it's used to back quilts, which should save me the trouble of having to tack on extra fabric for the overhang on my table. I also have some fringe and some 7mm velvet ribbon for the edging, and I'm opting for a light grey thread to machine stitch the cobwebs on, since I don't want as high a contrast as black and white would give. Without further ado, let's jump on in. Measure and mark your fabric to the size you want your tablecloth to be, including about 2 centimeters of seam allowance. Measure a border of approximately 10 centimeters and begin sketching your cobwebs into this space with Taylor's chalk or an erasable pen. The lines don't have to be perfect, they'll just be a guide for where you're going to sew. Using a light grey thread, stitch all of your cobwebs into place. I actually lost the cutting and marking footage and had to re-film it, so in the sewing sections you'll see a larger amount of seam allowance before the cobwebs. I ended up cutting this off later, so in the refilm I marked just what you actually need.
On the right side of your fabric, fold and press your seam allowance in half and pin your fringing onto the edge covering the section you just pressed. Using a zigzag stitch, sew into place. To frame your cobwebs, attach the 7mm velvet ribbon to the inner marking of your cobweb border. This turned out so pretty. I was a little worried about it coming together for a multitude of reasons, most having to do with getting supplies, but I think it turned into a really special piece. I love how extra the fringing makes it, and I might even go back and put a spiderweb motif in the middle as well, so that when it's on the table you see the spiderweb motif. It was fiddly to maneuver the machine into those tiny little swoops at like the center of each spider web, but I found sitting down and doing one side at a time and one cobweb at a time helped me keep my sanity and also prevented me from going completely cross-eyed. I highly recommend making yourself a fancy tablecloth. It's one of those things that's so easy to pick up, you just don't think about making it anymore, but it can add such a special touch to a room. I am so proud of this and it feels real special knowing that I made it from scratch. That is it for this project. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the notification bell to join along with the rest of 13 projects of Halloween. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you soon for project number eight. Bye!